So welcome to our talk. Um, let's first quickly introduce ourselves. Sandhya. Yeah. Hi, my name is Sandhya, and um, I work with a cool technology called Watson. I have been in the JE land for a long time. I won't tell you how many years, because then you'll guess my age. Um, I have worked on application server development, BPM, business process manager development. So it's, it's good to be here, and let's have a great interactive session, right? It's AI captain after all. Yeah, thank you. So for people who don't know me, I'm Stefan Janssen. I'm the founder of DevOps, and I also organize DevOps Belgium. And uh, it does give me quite a bit of free time to actually do some hacking and programming as well. So uh, this is what it's going to be about uh, today. Um, so first, let me set the context a bit. Um, I don't know if you follow DevOps Belgium, but this year our theme is deep learning. And this is our visual, connecting the dots. And as you can already see, we're really hinting towards cognitive computing, artificial intelligence. And what we really want to do is that we have all these tracks which are very similar to DevOps UK, but we really want to sprinkle a bit of these new services that we are seeing appearing in the, in the industry. And of course, if you organize such an event, you really want to know what it's all about. And that's why I started this project for myself, is that I want to demystify artificial intelligence or deep learning for myself and really have hands-on experience. Experience. And this is what the, the project is, is about. So what is Watson? Well, at times it feels like Watson is my third child. It is really brilliant and it learns very fast from its older siblings. Um, I have to train Watson, but the good news is that it has got machine learning algorithms and it can connect the dots and process lots of data. So it is an expert to me, much like our teenagers. That's how I would define it. Mm, okay. Well, I heard a lot of Watson, and like people link it to artificial intelligence and cognitive computing. And the first thing you do is like, okay, let's look this up on Wikipedia and see what is it really. And so instead of me talking about what it is, let, let's have Pepper say what it is. And the microphone, thank you, Daniel. There is no widely agreed definition for cognitive computing in either academia or industry. Cognitive computing platforms do encompass machine learning, reasoning, natural language processing, speech and vision, human-computer interaction, dialogue and narrative generation and more. Thank you, Pepper. So there is no real agreed definition. So, that's, that's, uh, you know, so it really shows that it's early days. Um, and so what we wanted to do is that, uh, maybe you know, but I'm also the co-founder together with Mark Hazel of Vox.com. And on Vox.com, it's like your daily fix on Java. So we've already got like more than a thousand articles on Vox.com. And next to that, we have many, many thousands of presentations from DevOps UK, Belgium, Morocco, France, and uh, hopefully soon uh, the US as well. So all these talks have been published on YouTube. Um, and so wouldn't it be great if we can do something intelligent with this content? Um, and so that was the, the basic set. When we met with Reggie last year in November talking about this, this, this collaboration, we said we should really use all of this uh, data and, and do something intelligent with it. And so this is what we really want to show. And it's also it's showing a prototype, but also a bit of a vision where we want to take it uh, to the next level. So here you see a catalog of Watson services. Currently in the project, we are using Alchemy API. And Alchemy API gives you the capability to process natural language, such as keyword extraction, entity extraction, get out images and tag them. It allows you to process lots of data, uh, like news feeds. So we will see usage of Alchemy API in the project. Next, we are using Concept Insights, and that builds concept graphs. Currently, it has 5 million plus concepts built on the English Wikipedia. So what we have done is added a new corpus for all the DevOps content that Stefan was pointing you to. We are also using language translation, which is quite robust. It has 60 plus languages that it can translate from one to another directly instead of going through English. So that's quite, quite handy. 
The speech-to-text APIs that we offer are very powerful. Not only do they do the audio conversion, but they also have capability to give you alternatives for the words being transcribed and a confidence score. So from the confidence score, the timestamps, and the alternatives that are given, you can get to a very accurate transcript. So that is quite, quite powerful. And we are also using visual recognition in the project, as you will see, uh, which is being used for tagging the images in the videos. So uh, let's go on. Yeah, so, but just to recap as well, there's quite a lot of other services we haven't touched yet. And uh, we first started with the speech to text, which I'll show you. But it was like it was going so fast that I was able to actually add more services almost on a daily basis. Um, so yeah, really excited about that. So this is the architecture, and this is the prototype that I've built uh, together with Sandia. Is that on the left we have the audio from the YouTube talks, and we have the Voxed articles. Um, and so what I did first is that I built uh, a Spring application. So I basically used, because you, you think, oh, Watson and Bluemix, you must probably be using Eclipse. No, I, I just stayed in my comfort zone. So I'm, I'm an IntelliJ user. So I used IntelliJ. I know Spring. So I created a, a Spring uh, a project. And um, I was able to very rapidly just run it on Tomcat and then just deploy it on Bluemix. Um, but even that isn't needed. So even my uh, Watson uploader processor can just run locally because what it does, it talks via REST or via an SDK to the Watson backend. Right? So you don't even have to deploy it. Um, you can just run it locally. And so the beauty of IBM Watson, so the, the five services that you want to access, you can access it either via just REST uh, or curl or using an SDK. And the SDK, of course, has a Java version, but it also supports multiple other languages. And uh, you told me as well yesterday of Unity. Yes. Yeah. So if you're a gamer or something, you can... Yeah. If you are into gaming, Unity SDK that Watson offers you can really animate what you are doing in your gaming projects, and you can speak to the games that you are designing, as well as leverage rest of the Watson services through the Unity SDK. And we have Python SDK, Node.js, uh, as well as iOS and Android. Yeah. So that was the, the first part, is this uploader. Um, so you can upload all this content and process it, because you do get JSON back, uh, and you need to then do some, some bit of processing on, on this JSON, but very limited. And then the second app that I've uh, taken, I didn't develop that. It, this was an existing TED application that I think IBM bought, uh, developed together with the TED uh, folks. So that's a Node.js application, which I basically tweaked. So I changed it, added a few more parameters based on what I was able to produce. And that way, I had a nice demo app, which I'll show you after uh, the, the, the introductory slides. So that's the, that's the architecture, very straightforward. Uh, so how do you start? So the first thing is that you need to connect to Watson um, through either the SDK. Um, we even started just on the command line. I mean, Sandia was like bombarding me with curl statements that I could just execute. So it was just, OK, Stefan, just try this curl statement. And just that talks to Watson, right? And then that basically was a way to test it very rapidly. And then it was just a matter to either use the SDK, related SDK talks, or, or do a REST type of call like curl does. So in my Spring uh, Java application, the only dependency I had to add was this one here. So I just have to add the um, uh, Watson Developer Cloud uh, library, the Java SDK. And um, the, the funny thing there is that we started first with three, uh, I think it was 2.9, wasn't it, at first? 2.9. Yeah, we started with 2.9. Then uh, Sandeep said, oh, there's a new release. You should use a release candidate 1, 3.0. And I did. And we, we needed a specific feature where I want to inject, and we'll, we'll see that more in detail, user fields. And it didn't work. And we, we spent really like three days like going backwards and forwards all over uh, Slack. Like, oh, why doesn't this work? Why doesn't it work? And so she reached out over Stack Overflow to your colleagues. Mm -hmm. We got a response. Uh, I think it, you have the, your colleagues in Russia. Yes. Right? <laughs> and they said, oh, you should add these setter getters to this specific, I think it was uh, uh, results, uh, to the results uh, class. And it's all open source. So I was able to just go into the code, add those setters, rebuild it. It's Maven, right? 
right? So you just Maven uh, clean install, and I had my snapshot, uh, my snapshot, sorry. Uh, so with my snapshot, I could then continue, and we were able to actually uh, work. And you guys even submitted it to then a Maven repository somewhere, or? Yeah. So I mean, it was easy to pull in the uh, bug fix and rebuild and publish the uh, new version of the SDK. So these are all open sourced, as you can see, and the issues are being monitored, and new releases are being published. So it's, and it is, of course, signed by IBM, so it is legitimate, yeah. and it's easy. So it, it does prove to me that, first of all, you guys are responsive, which is great, um, but it also shows that it's, I won't say bleeding edge, but it is cutting edge, right? I mean, there's still things that you see like, oh, okay, this is still not working over here, there, but, but yeah, that, so that was a very positive experience, nevertheless. If you don't like Maven, there's also Gradle support, so, but basically, you just add that to your POM file, and that's where you start. Great, so now you've got your, Intelligent, IntelliJ or Eclipse or NetBeans environments, uh, you can start. So the first thing we wanted to do was speech to text. Um, because I was, again, I was very skeptical starting this. I mean, as I was talking to Reggie and Cindy, I was like, I don't believe Watson can do these things and so on. And I still have a few doubts, which hopefully they will be able to diffuse in the future. But the first one for us was speech to text. Let's try this. So to, to give you a visual, so this is, for example, the YouTube uh, channel of DevOps Belgium. Um, we got a, hundreds and hundreds of, of talks there. And so the, the nice one I thought to start with was the Mark Reynolds opening keynotes, which he did in November, talking about Java 9 and modules, right? So let me give you the demo here. So let me see if the internet will help us. So this is basically the talk here from is Mark Reynolds. primarily going to be about modules. This is probably not news. Anyway. Um, so that's that's so. What you do is that you go to this website, the audio analysis application, and maybe Sandia, you can walk yeah. me through it. So uh, this is a website that we have put out for all of you to try, and it takes in any uh, YouTube URL. And here, Stefan has given Mark Reynolds YouTube, and so it is going to load it, start transcribing. The concepts will be gathered by Watson, as you will see in real time. So these are concepts that it has. All right. Good morning. So Welcome. It's playing the video now. And the, the Wi-Fi isn't great, right? So it might be a bit uh, uh, buggy, buggy for that. So that's why we have some screenshots. And I think we're already running into it. But it basically plays the video. And it has like this uh, webhook uh, using WebSockets Drop. where it replies the, the transcripts, and you can then see the transcripts uh, appear. And so that's what I was afraid of, is that the Wi-Fi is not helping is us here. primarily going to be about modules. Let's give it a, we've got some time. This is so. probably not news to most of you here in the room. But as, as part of the bigger picture, well, how, how, how does this fit in? Because after all, Java is, oh my goodness, is 20 years old this year. I've been working on it for most of those years, which is, so Watson know, is now mistake. doing I'm the analysis sure. in the background, and eventually how, we'll how get is it the that responses. Java has lasted this long? Why is it still you know so popular? Well, we've had a fairly basic method for evolving it. We identify a pain point in the platform, something that's affecting everybody who uses it, whether they're developers, deployers, or users. We figure out what the missing abstraction is, and on, then Watson. we add it to the platform. If we do this right, then it will look like something that has been there all along. Now, we can't always do that. Sometimes Java has been criticized for being a platform. I'll let it continue, yeah. uh, and I'll show you the screenshots, because eventually they will show up. Uh, but it's just a lag of the, the internet connection. But eventually, once it starts loading, you will see this type of timeline. So you, you saw the video. You saw the analysis working. I'll come back to the real demo later on. And what it's doing is that it's extracting already the concepts of the, co of the content, of the transcripts. And the first thing that I noticed is this red box here. You see it actually says, all right, good morning, welcome. Java 9 is primarily going to be about models. You go like, models? No, it's modules, right? So that was already like, mm, OK, we, we need to uh, enhance that. So there is another tool, which is pure transcribing audio. I'll, uh, I'll, I won't run it. Maybe during the Q&A, we can still do it. Sure. Um, but if you upload the audio file, um, what you will see is that it's doing, again, the same transcript, but it's starting to show you also the confidence, confidence rating, right? So there you yeah. can jump in. Sure. Uh, um, and what you'll see is on the second alternative for models, 
it says modules with a 5% uh, confidence rate. So for me, that was already great, uh, because first of all, what you can do in this application is that you can actually enter your keywords. So you can say and train basically the speech to text API and say like, these are the terminologies that we use at the DevOps technical IT conference. You give all these keywords, and then it will actually try to say, ah, okay, modules, they probably mean modules, and so they're starting to give alternatives to your, uh, to your talk. Um, so that's pretty, uh, that's, I mean, that, I was excited about that. I it was, and again, we were going backwards and forwards, and I was like, man, modules, I need modules. And then they came back, no, no, you need keywords, okay. And so, again, I got one of those curl commands. So if you want to do this in curl, it's very straightforward. You need to have your username and password, uh, of course, or your credentials. But basically, you hit this speech-to-text API version 1. Uh, endpoints, and then you pass it some parameters. And so the parameters here is, for example, give me three alternative transcripts uh, with a confidence uh, true, and then you give it some keywords and a keyword threshold. So if the threshold of the confidence is above uh, or uh, above 0 0.5 or 50 percent, it will actually then take that alternative uh, word for you. Great. So how do I do that in Java? Well, very, very simple. Um, so this is a piece of the code uh, from the app. You basically create a builder, uh, you get a recognized uh, options, and you see, again, the same parameters here. So you say which, so they, they support multiple audio files. O OGG is one of them. Right. Um, unfortunately, not MP3. Uh, yeah, MP3 is not that yeah. high fidelity. So. Yeah, OK. Right. Um, and then you pass on the different parameters, like the keywords and so on. And then you say recognize. It sends the audio file to the backends. And then you execute. This execute was uh, added to 3.0, so you have a synchronous and an asynchronous way of, of executing. So this will block, um, but if you want to have a callback, you also have that possibility. So you can just play with it. And this will basically return the speech results. And the speech results has this transcript and the alternatives. So that's like, wow. It's too simple, right? All the complexity, the AI magic is happening in Watson, and I just have a very simple interface. I mean, it had to be simple, otherwise it would be, you know, I wouldn't be able to do this stuff, right? Great, so... Let's introduce Concept yeah. Insights. Yeah. And this was our first step, right? So we already yeah. had, like, great. So we got all these talks, and we now have the transcripts uh, with the alternative keywords, and we can populate our corpus, which is the next step. Yes. Yes. So Concept Insights, can you quickly give an introduction to that? Yeah. So Concept Insights is pre-trained um, set of APIs that you're getting. Um, as I was mentioning, it is based on the English Wikipedia and has more than 5 million concept graphs already built into it. So any new corpus we add is then factored into those graphs and becomes an integral part of the entire arena that Watson will now treat as concepts. So what we wanted to do is build a specific corpus that is geared towards the DevOps and Voxed content yeah. and then do conceptual searches on it. So we've done the YouTube audio transcripts, so we also had the Voxed articles, right? So I don't know if you know this, but on Voxed I added a, a WordPress plugin called AMP, which is Accelerated Mobile Pages. So if you do like the uh, a Voxed article and then do question mark AMP, you get the Accelerated Mobile version, which is just the pure content. And there you can easily, with a JSOUP uh, selector, you can just say, give me the content, and I've got that text, right? Um, so I started like that first. And then again, Sandia inspired me and said, oh, well, in, in Alchemy, there is actually a call, which is this one here. So you go to the Watson uh, Gateway, and there is uh, from uh, Alchemy an endpoint called URL get text. And the only thing you need to do is give it an article. So you give it the URL article, and it's a pure HTML article endpoint, right? And this will just return me the text, the pure text of the article. So not the marketing and the commercials, just the text. I said, bloody hell, wow. <laughs> this is like, wow, this is great, right? So uh, I, could, I, I don't only have to do like Vox, I could go to InfoQ, and I did, of course, enter it, and I got all the technical content from InfoQ. So I'll, I'll call Mar uh, Floyd and say like, hey, Floyd, you know, you want to join the corpus? We, we can feed it, right? So great, this, this was like a gift from heaven. 
The only downside is, I, I do must criticize this a bit, I mean, every endpoint has a price and, and, and works with, uh, with credits, or I don't know what the terminology is, but... Yeah, the, I mean, it is the number of calls yeah. that you can make. Yeah. yeah, and so the alchemy is expensive in the sense of credit points. I don't know the pricing, because you guys are basically giving me free keys, which is, I, I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, but they do have, and that's important for you guys as developers, you get free trial keys and you can do like 500 calls a day, for example. So you can really play with it, and it doesn't cost you anything uh, money-wise, effort-wise. Well, that looks very simple. I must say, it was the first time I used this JSOUP API. I don't know if anybody knows this. Oh, I'm in love with this. I mean, they should have this in, as a replacement for Java.net. Uh, it's an open source uh, API, and you see it's a very nice, fluid uh, way of programming. And it's basically you know, a REST curl call um, simulating in, it in Java. And then Sandia again mailed me and said, Stefan, there's actually another cool method called URL get combined data. And this is again going su to alchemy. And what you can do there, so you add some other parameters, but here you can say extract from this article URL the authors, the document emotion, when the article was published, the document sentiment, and the title. You go like, what the hell? How do how do they do this, right? Like so, because I was doing like with the AMP, I was just getting really they get the author, and of course on InfoQ, if the author wasn't there, it wouldn't find it. So they're doing some voodoo magic, I don't know, behind the scenes, which I of course don't have access to, but this basically returns me a JSON documents with all these uh, with all this information. So that's it. I mean, I've basically parsed with these two calls uh, the Voxed articles. But not only that, I was able to get the emotion and the sentiment of the person who wrote the article. And you're like, wow. Yeah, I was like, goosebumps, right? <laughs> so that was uh, very exciting. So now I've got this content. I now need to populate the inside. So maybe you yeah. can walk through this, uh, Sandia? Sure. So what we had thought of was we will use the special field, user fields, when creating a document in the corpus. So the transcript that Stefan is getting using speech to text is being fed directly as a document. Along with that transcript, we are also adding the user fields. And they are all the properties that is the YouTube link. It is the document uh, emotion, sentiment, the author name, the publication date that Stefan got using the Alchemy API. Yeah. Um, so, and the uh, thumbnail JPEG. Yeah, that was another crazy thing. So, I, so I'm reusing this for both a Vox article and the transcript. And then I saw, oh, there's another service called Vision Recognition. Right? Visual Recognition. Visual Recognition. So what you do, you send it uh, an image and then it will analyze the image. And it will say, ah, in this image, there's a person in this image, or there's a boat, or a, and so on. So I was able to actually add more user fields here while I was starting to play with other features. So that was, uh, was pretty exciting. Right. But this is really important. The corpus is like the database of all your content, right? Uh, and you populate it using this mechanism. So you populate it by using this type of document text, which is the, the core uh, information, and then you complement it with user fields, and that can be unlimited and uh, as much as you want. All right, so we've got speech to text, we've got the articles now, so how do I deploy this? And I was a bit scared, like Bluemix, I've never touched that before, right? I mean, I'm, I use Amazon uh, EC2 and so on. Um, so I was like, okay, this is probably going to be hard. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I did um, convince Stefan that it's not hard because all you need is a manifest.yml file and that is a core Cloud Foundry concept since Bluemix is based on Cloud Foundry Pass. And um, there was no change needed. All we had to do was specify the war file and give the build pack name. And this is a Java build pack that is uh, geared towards Tomcat. So that was it. And the code could be pushed. I mean, that, that really, that, this one impressed me. So I didn't know that it ex existed. So basically, I had my Spring uh, application running on Tomcat, and I didn't have to touch anything, nothing. So the only thing, uh, there was one file called this manifest YAML file, 
where they basically are doing the binding. They're also saying which services we're using. And then you follow these steps. So you install Cloud Foundry. Um, you uh, connect to the API. You do a Maven clean install. You log in, and then you push it. And you only have to log in once. So in that same uh, session, you can just say, uh, clean install, push, poof, it's there. Easy. And of course, I ask uh, Hadi as well. I, I can also do this from within IntelliJ directly, because there's a Cloud Foundry uh, plugin for, for IntelliJ. So that's, that's easy peasy. So how does it look on the back end? So here's a dashboard you can see. Uh, this is my account. And we have two applications running that Stefan will share with you. One is for uploading uh, the audio content. So that's this one here. So that's the video search. We started as a video search, but basically it's the uploader and processor uh, application. And the other one is the uh, application used to search using Node.js, uh, yeah. Watson SDK. And the applications are bound to the services that we are using. Yeah. And if we click on any tile. And you can see it visually. That's also nice. So you see visually, this app is using these services. And this one is, for example, you see it's using Node.js. And is it the visual uh, recognition, I think? Yeah, visual recognition. Yeah. So that's a pictorial view. And if you click on the app on that tile, you will go uh, drill deeper. And you can see that we are using 1 GB heap memory because of the large size of audio files that Stefan has to upload. Yeah. So that's a, an interesting anecdote. So uh, Sandia started testing with two minutes audios. and. Uh, Okay, and I said, but, well, you know, these talks, we have three hour university talks. I want to just send these three, you know, this is like 60 megabytes audio file and see if Bluemix can handle it. So I tried it and poof, it exploded. It was like, uh, not enough memory. So it, by default, it started by 512 megabytes. We, I just had to increase it to one gig and it was fine. So now it's already like I can just send, you know, 100 megabyte audio files, and it can just handle that. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And uh, the tool I'm mostly using, so here you, you're basically increasing the memory. You can change the routes. The routes are basically your endpoints uh, of your project. So you can add multiple ones and then do a DNS mapping. So we have a, a DevOps friendly URL. But the, um, the one I used most was the logs file. So that basically is logging everything happening in the application. So you can see what's, what's going on. Cool. I think that's a, that's a bit the scene. So what I want to now do is show the, the actual demo app. So again, I, I need to give credits to the, the TETS folks and, and IBM of doing that. Uh, so it was already a very impressive uh, application. And I just basically added more uh, juice to it. Ah, and here you see, I, I stopped it. But you, it was already coming back to me when, uh, with the transcripts. right? So it did find Java. It did find Welcome. And if I would have had continued the uh, analysis, it would have found, well, here you have the models, you see. Um, and if I would do then the other one, you would see that it gives alternatives. And it also shows here, based on the circle uh, uh, radius, uh, how confident uh, the uh, Watson is. All right. So where's the demo? Here it is. So it's on watson.devox.com. So we, we are announcing basically this demo. So it's, it's running on Bluemix. Um, and there's, there's two ways of, of interacting with it. So one way is through concepts, and the other one is through uh, normal text. So what I can do, and again, hopefully the internet is working, but I can type in like Lambda. And what it's doing is that it's going to Wikipedia and giving me all the concepts that it knows about Lambda. So the first one is, of course, let's just go with the first one. So I select that one. And now it's talking to the corpus, and it's giving me all the responses uh, from the Voxed articles and the audio. Now, the audio, I've only done five talks. So you will almost see no audio results uh, using this, this way. But OK, it's a start. And so what you're seeing, which is really cool, so it's showing the thumbnail of the Voxed article. And it's doing this visual recognition. So it says, ah, this is what I'm getting from Watson. It's a person. So it already recognized it. It's a person. Great. It got the title using Alchemy. It got the, the author. It got the publication date. So I, I, it just magically got that out of this uh, document. And what I've added as well is the sentiment. So the sentiment is positive, but the emotions is, f has, is representing as fear. 
Uh, and so maybe you can explain yeah, that again because sure. it's like it's positive, but there's fear. So you have positive fear. How does that? Yeah. Right, right. The reason being that the sentiment analysis is done on different data set as compared to the emotional analysis. There are different algorithms being used for the two. The standard algorithms for doing sentiment and emotional analysis based on psychological testing. Uh, though, so the author is being positive in how he's talking, but at the same time he's using words like constricted, constrained, and all of those are adding to it being a fearful sort of emotions. Yeah. And so what you're seeing here on the right, the coloring is not that good because there's normally gray rectangling, so that's probably the projector. But the lambda is the one that I entered, right, that I selected. And then the insights gives me a related uh, contexts. So it says that, ah, you, you've chosen lambda. Well, relation, that means that anonymous functions are linked to lambda, lambda calculus, and C-sharp programming language. And if I go with my mouse over anonymous function, uh, you, again, you can't see the highlight, but it's highlighting, ah, yeah, you can see it. It's hiding lambda, so it's getting the part of the transcripts and shows where these relationships have been accomplished. So if I move lower, you see lambda expressions are linked to lambda calculus. So that's, that's great because expressions, there's nothing here about expressions, so it knows about these relationships. And for example, with C sharp, uh, it, it, it actually was able to uh, analyze that there was a C sharp there. So you see that it, it's like really uh, yeah, doing some, some interesting things there. And so the other demo uh, that I have is the body text. So what I did is that you can not only query the corpus via concepts, but you can query it via just text. So you can type in a text. Uh, so what I did is that I copied the transcripts from, I think, Jürgen Höhler, uh, the, the lead on Spring Framework, and I put it in the example two. So if you press example two, this is based from his talk from uh, DevOx uh, Belgium. And Watson is now actually getting from his talk, his transcript, they're getting scripting language, software as a framework, and Java development kits out of this uh, document. And if I scroll down, you will see that, well, it's black here because of, again, the Wi-Fi most likely. But this is a, a YouTube frame where the talk from Jürgen Höhler, ah, there it is, on the Spring Framework Roadmap is actually found using this type of search. It's pretty, pretty cool, isn't it? I mean, at least I find that cool. My wife wasn't depressed either. <laughs> right. That's like, the true sign. Yeah, <laughs> what are you doing? That's strange. Um, <laughs> but I think the beauty here is that this is a different way. I've actually found articles on Vox which I didn't find with regular search just because I can do more intelligent search using concepts. So it was very interesting to actually see the results and these mechanisms. So if you want to play with it, go to watson.devox.com, and that's going to be there for, for quite a while. And this is only the start. I mean, I've been hacking on this for two weeks now, and I'm, I've promised that I'll sacrifice my summer holidays and just move it to the next level for DevOps Belgium. OK. So that's the, the architecture. So yeah, I've done the demo. Great. So what's next? Sure. What else can we do? Lots. So uh, as you see in yellow, those are the services or APIs that we have already used. Uh, what Stefan and I are discussing as next step is to get into dialogue, which, as you see, is talking to Watson in human language and getting back results. So this will be really nifty in and, and a true acid test for us to be able to converse uh, and do searches in a conversational manner. And not only searches, but any sorts of dialogues we want to have, just like you and I are talking, can be done. Well, so I don't so believe that's possible. <laughs> I mean, so I have to convince now, Stefan, yeah, one more no, time. No way. <laughs> oh, so yeah, I'm really curious. And uh, then, along with dialogue, uh, we would like to use the natural language classifier that will make the uh, 
contextual analysis, more semantic oriented, we will be able to classify categories of words and sentences in certain categories so that immediately the processing when it falls in a certain category is then taken to conceptual search. So uh, the paths can be more streamlined and more intelligent. So we are going to use dialogue and natural language classifier. We will also use tone analyzer to get a better analysis of the tone of the talk in the talk so one cool project i want to do is like on the devox belgium we have this twitter wall so what we will be able to do very easily now is do tone analysis on the twitter wall and see how the attendees are experiencing the devox uh, events because you will actually see if they're like happy or sad or angry or things like that. And, and, and we can do this over a timeline. So you could see like, oh, on Monday they were maybe unhappy, but then we fixed the bug with the My DevOps app. So now they're Tuesday, they're happier again because they can vote again and things like that. So that, that's going to be interesting. Absolutely. And that what you're describing has been done many, many, many times yeah. in other situations. So it would be really cool to put it to effect. Yeah. yeah. And so another one, uh, Antonio, and this is for you, my friend, language translation. So we have a lot of DevOx France talks. They're all in French on YouTube. So what we're going to do is that we're going to translate, we're going to get the transcripts out of DevOx France YouTube, translate it to English, populate the corpus. You can then ask questions in Dutch and get an English response. Yeah. I mean, bloody hell. I mean, seriously? And this is possible today. That's like... Yes. <laughs> Antonio? <laughs> and I've heard that Watson also can um, recognize the video of speech and translate it into another language. Yes. You know, voice to... Yeah. So sure. the, the question is, uh, can it also do the real-time translation? And that's where you have the text-to-speech, for example. So you do speech-to-text, uh, translate it to English, and then play it to speech. Right? So um, th there's some scary stuff you can do these days. So uh, that's, that's exciting. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, so those are the services. So how we want to go about uh, practically? Well, so the first thing is that, well, um, I need somebody to help me to slurp the, the video. So if, if anybody's interested here in joining this project, it's open sourced. I'll give you the links later on. Uh, but basically, the first thing, I, I already automated a small script where it's taking uh, a website and it slurps all the documents and it pushes it in the corpus. So that's already done. But what I really need now is I don't want to manually download the MP4 from YouTube, which legally you can't do, but it's my content, so that's fine. Uh, then I need to extract the audio out of the MP4 so I can do this with FFMPEG, right? Uh, I can do this on an instance, uh, and then the OGG needs to be published to uh, Watson so it can get the transcript out of it. So I need to automate that. So that way I can say, oh, go to Google, Fra go to YouTube, DevOps France, pff, suck all the audios in, and, and push it, push it into the corpus. So, so that's a, a, a mini project where if anybody is interested in helping, Simon, I'm looking at you, but I didn't mention, yeah, I did mention you. <laughs> uh, so that could be a cool one to do, nicely isolated. Um, what I also want to do is look at alternatives. I mean, I'm not married with IBM, so of course I will want to look at Google, I want to look at Amazon, Microsoft, and all the other services. Uh, but what we've noticed is that we did a comparison with the YouTube transcripts, because YouTube creates automatic transcripts as well, as well and they're almost identical. Right? And YouTube doesn't have this API yet to get the text and have the alternative. So IBM is leading on that, on that part. And they're actually, again, they're not paying me to say this. This is pure my experience. They're leading on quite a few, actually, services. Uh, Google has like four uh, services out there doing this. Visual recognition, speech to text, machine learning using TensorFlow, and the other one I'm, I'm missing. Um, and two of, two of those four are still in beta. Right. Um, so, you know, but, but it's clear, it's like, th this is happening. If you want to do some cool stuff, th 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 this is now. This is like, it's clear that this is like going to turn uh, a few things upside down. So definitely want to play with some alternatives. Uh, not only alternatives, but also the alternative keywords, right? Yes, that's <laughs> right. And then the one that I wanted to have is I want to interface with a pep robot. So I want to talk to the pep robot, and I'm hoping that Daniel uh, will help me with this. So I want to say, Pepper, uh, Pepper, uh, can you show me the Mark Reynolds keynote from DevOx Belgium 2015? Right? And then he or she, I think th that's the he, <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, he will actually go to you know, Watson, get the user field, and then show the video on his uh, tablet. Right? And that's doable. 
Yeah. So that's something we're going to do. Um, we'll probably then demonstrate at DevOps Belgium. And then the other one is that I always wanted to have this echo thing, right? So I bought one, of course. I said, honey, but well, my wife doesn't know yet. Right? So I, st <laughs> I still need to tell her. So don't tweet this, but I'll, I'll have to tell her. But I'll tell her, like, uh, yeah, but I'm doing this cool project with IBM. I had to have this echo. And so I will say, like, OK, Alexa, and then ask that question. Like, play me the, the video of Mark Reynolds' keynote from DevOps Belgium 2015, and it will start playing the, the video. Well, not the video, but the, the audio, right? So that's what I want to do as well. And then probably next week, uh, Apple will release uh, an, a home assistant as well. Google has done that. So that will be the way to communicate, and then I need to have some smart backends to actually get the response. So that's definitely what I want to achieve and play with, even if it's just an excuse to get all the, the cool hardware. And then personally, but if you guys are, are interested in helping, I know I have, a lo I have a lot of friends working at Google, so when they see this talk, they will go like, oh, Stefan, but we're better and we can do this and that, so I'll definitely want to touch their services as well and, and understand uh, if they're better or if they're complementary to what we, you guys are doing, etc. So definitely want to investigate that. And then the, the shout out is get involved. So this morning I open sourced my two projects. So if you go to github.com uh, slash devops, um, you will find those two um, public uh, projects. So the, the first one is the, um, the uploader and processor. So that's this one, the Watson Devoxed uh, project. Uh, so it's a Maven uh, project. The only thing you need to do, I have a readme file there. The only thing you need to do is that I had to remove my application.properties file. The application.property file has all the key, the keys, right? So you do need to replay, you need to create that file, populate your temporary keys, which are free, and play with the DevOps sandbox corpus. That way, because we now have two corpuses. We have the official DevOps corpus, which I only want to populate with real data. And then the sandbox is what you can play with. So you can just you know, add some your own articles, like Italian or German articles, see how it behaves, and, and, and really just play with that. And then the demo is the TETS demo, which is this one here. So it's Watson DevOps uh, Insights uh, demo. Yeah, so Stefan, I would just like to add that uh, once you go to these projects in the README file, you will see the instructions on how to populate the services and how to just push the project to Bluemix. Yeah. So all the instructions are right there. And uh, there's a sign up link if you want to use the Bluemix cloud and simply push the project and have it running, you can sign up for a free trial. Yeah. And uh, the, the, the good folks from IBM told me that they will also support you. We'll probably set up a Slack channel. And, and you know, we really want to get the momentum going uh, and, and get some more people involved. And uh, like I said, I mean, in Belgium, the weekends, they're very rainy. So, you know, you might as well code, right? <laughs> So what's the other next step, like the vision, where we want to go? I mean, we've hinted already a few times to this, but, but like, yeah. what could be another use case, Sandia? Yeah, another very simple, straightforward use case is to come up with a cognitive bot, and that will search a corpus of DevOps, Voxed videos and articles. Uh, a person may be speaking in French, as you said, at DevOps France, and we will convert that to text using speech to text, translate that to English, and invoke the dialogue API that will take out the keywords from the question asked, will classify it using the natural language classifier, and then have a go at Alchemy APIs that will extract keywords, relationships, sentiments, authors, you name it. It's a very rich API. And then send the keywords to our to your application, yeah. Stefan. And but but it also needs to learn, right? Because if I mm. ask a question and say like, give me, show me the talk from Mike Reynolds, Bel DevOx Belgium, blah blah blah, it will probably return me like three alternative solutions or three alternative suggestions. Mm. And then I need to say, ah, it's that one. So you're learning basically the system. Is that right? Yes, or? that is right. So I mean, Watson it gains its expertise from the training that we are giving it. So, for example, in Dialog, you have a training tool to rate what it gave you is right or wrong, and what is the confidence that you are giving it. So you have a variation, not just right and wrong, but also a variation of confidence in the answer you got back. Yeah. And same thing with we can trade the na train the natural language classifier as well. Okay, great. Right. Okay. 
Cool. So, so that basically summarizes our, our, our prototype, our, our uh, weekend project, at least for me. So I, I must say, I was impressed. At first, I was like not impressed with speech to, uh, to text, but when I saw the alternatives and that possibility, that was very powerful. And then so it was like, yes, OK, that's what I need. Um, it also depends a bit on the accent of the speaker. Um, so if I took Mark Reynolds because it has a very clear pronounce, pronunciation. Uh, if you have somebody like Mario who has a, a strong accent, I, I'm, it's going to be interesting to see how the transcripts come out of that, and if you can still make something useful out of that. Um, so, you know, you need to play with this. Yeah, there I wanted to add that uh, we are working on the speech to text for non -nati native English speakers. Yeah. So that's coming. It's, it's completely in flux. I mean, this is like really in progress and evolving very rapidly. So, yeah. And then the Watson insights, or the concept insights, I thought that was very interesting. At least for me, I was able to find other articles which I normally didn't find on Vox, which I've missed, actually. So I thought that was a very interesting uh, approach. Uh, the alchemy, I think that's where all the magic is happening. Uh, it is an expensive one in the sense from credits uh, and so on, but from a performance point of view, it's very fast. I mean, it's not taking uh, long to, to actually get results. Um, and then, yeah, I, I mean, I, I must admit, I mean, it is very straightforward. The code examples, I mean, it was very simple. You saw that. I mean, you don't have to be a machine learning expert, just a, a normal enterprise developer, and off you go. Or even just a UI developer, and you just call the calls from your JavaScript uh, part. I mean, it's, it's very simple to start working with this. So I'm, I'm definitely impressed. Um, and wh what you do see is that all these other players are approaching it the same way. They have an SDK or a curl REST interface, right? Uh, Google, Amazon, they're, Microsoft, they're all doing the same thing. So uh, Oracle is not doing anything here yet, right? So they're still struggling with cloud, it seems. Um, so it's, they, they have a bit of catch up to do. That's a shout out to Oracle, actually. Um, so artificial intelligence, it's not magic. I mean, it has definitely already demystified it a bit for me just by uh, going through these uh, services. And uh, yeah, I'm definitely excited. I mean, I definitely want to do more with this. And uh, thank you for the opportunity. I know I'm helping you guys as well promoting it, but hey, I mean, I'm using it and I'm having fun with it. So, so thank you for that. Me too. I'm having lots of fun. So it's been great working with Stefan. <laughs> great. So I hope we, we've demystified a bit the, uh, the nasty robots. So we've still got four minutes. If you have any questions, uh, feel, uh, feel free to shout. We'll take the microphone. Mario? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, what's your experience, uh, personal experience with uh, the learning curve of this? Because, of course, you are helped by air because I need to do that. Oh, use this URL. But is there some uh, yeah. documentation? The, the documentation uh, is really nice. Uh, it has like all the APIs. And next to it, it has all the curl examples. It shows all the parameters explained and what it gets back. And then you just hit that curl command. The curl command, then you can choose, say, oh, I'll just map it to a JSOUP call, or I will look up the Java API and then use the Java API. But the Java API is often very similar, as you saw, uh, based on the curl. So uh, you, you need to, and all these services are documented like that. So they've done a great job there in documentation. It's all very consistent, very clean. I mean, it's IBM, right? I mean, this is a huge company, right? So they're really doing quite a bit of investment and effort in there. Um, I, I've been only doing this for two weeks, the last two weeks, right? Yeah. So, and um, it's, yeah, it's been very, I mean, I, the, the idea was only to do one service and I added four more, right? So it, was, it went very fast. And the uploader, and uh, with all respect to Sina, but I did that development, right? I mean, I, I did all of that development and she was whispering in my ear all the curl codes and, and she was helping me with the deployment, but the pure coding I did and it was like, yeah. easy. Yeah, and I'm not a rock star developer, so I mean, if you're going to do this, Mario, you know, it's going to be like, wow. And, and another question probably for her is that, uh, yeah, of course I'm a geek, so I'm also interested to, let's say, understand how it works, uh, the magic thing internally. So can you suggest some uh, books, some uh, resources to, to, to learn this uh, uh, machine learning algorithm, to play with them, to, to I don't know. So we, yeah, go on. No, no, you go first. Um, thank you. Yeah, I mean, uh, there is, uh, we are sharing the magic that is underneath Watson. And um, so, uh, I mean, you have my Twitter handle right there. And I mean, instead of suggesting you books, I will take you right to the source of the algorithms being used. Just shout out to me on Twitter and... 
And Perfect. another beautiful opportunity, I started with my second slide. It's a, this is the theme for DevOps Belgium. So, you know, I'm going to ask Reggie to get some people talk about the magic behind it and, and talk at, at DevOps about this as well. Again, demystifying it for us and understanding. There's also some really, I, I've already seen in the call for papers, some really cool presentations from TensorFlow that we're going to have at DevOps Belgium as well, which is a bit the competing machine learning uh, backend. And yeah, it's a lot of math and uh, crazy stuff there. But uh, yeah, interesting. Any other questions? Oh, we've always done that, right? <laughs> so the question was, is, is DevOps going to pick up speakers on their uh, English accents? That's why you've never spoke at DevOps Belgium. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? So who, if not, who, who's interested in, in being involved? Just out of, yeah, so Simon, great, a few people. So we're going to be uh, for 30 minutes at the IBM booth. Uh, if you want to talk to us or you're too shy now, uh, even if you don't want to be involved, just download, fork uh, the, the project, have a look at it, uh, extend it, play with it, and if you want to donate some code, uh, feel free to do so. And thank you for your attention.